no surprise that we've got a larger and a growing chorus of voices calling for a plan B. If we can't get there with political responses, with social responses, maybe what we need are technological responses. Large-scale technological interventions that might make this problem go away, or at the least would buy us time. Sulfate particles in the stratosphere. Anything that would increase the reflectivity of some part of Earth's systems to reflect some amount of sunlight or solar radiation back into space. Aluminum. Uh, models suggest that if we could Gotcha. reduce the incoming solar radiation by about 2%, we could reduce global average temperatures back to pre-industrial levels. So these technologies offer a, a kind of a hand on the thermostat. We could turn down global average temperatures by these sorts of large-scale technological manipulations. And we have One way to think about these geoengineering technologies is as an impulse to mastery of nature. And lots of people say, this is the very impulse that got us into this mess in the first place. So geoengineering could be used as a way to prevent more effective actions on climate change. For political reasons, but also because they limit our social imaginations, our ways to see other forms of response. We might so buy in to the techno fix that we can't see another way forward. I'm torn. If we had turned off that stream of sulfate particles into the stratosphere, models suggest we would see a sudden spike in global average temperatures. And that spike would be much more destructive than a gradual increase in temperatures. So all of these sorts of material risks and challenges that scientists have been paying good attention to tie to another set of challenges that we're only just now really starting to grapple with, a set of political risks and challenges. Can you name a human institution that has survived for hundreds or perhaps thousands of years and done the sort of complex things we'd have to imagine human institutions could do to make this a reality. How would we govern domestically and internationally putting sulfate particles into the stratosphere or some of these other geoengineering technologies that we're talking about? It's a very difficult thing to imagine and people are just now starting to grapple with it. Also attached to these political risks are who gets to put their hand on the thermostat? Who decides how these things are used? Because ultimately there are big questions about justice and control baked into this whole conversation. Many of the scientific proponents, the scientists who um, are pushing for geoengineering research and work, um, seem to believe that if we opened up space using geoengineering, just to kind of buy us some time, then the international community would get its act together. Suddenly we'd all come together and we'd find a way to transition to a low carbon economy, which is the only way ultimately to tackle climate change. But that to me just seems like magical thinking. That doesn't make any sense to me. If we can't get our act together in the face of looming crisis, um, what makes anybody think that we'd suddenly come together once the pressure's off? It might be far more likely um, that in fact this will be sold as a solution. You can have your high carbon cake and you can eat it too. You can keep living your life just as you're living it uh, because we've made this problem miraculously disappear. strontium coming down on you. Why would we not believe it's happening when what we see in the sky matches exactly the express goal of numerous geoengineering patents, about 160 or more? Why would we not believe this is happening when every element showing up in the rain tests are the primary elements named in those geoengineering patents? Why would we not believe this is happening when we have escalating levels in very sh short time frames, as much as short as five years, we see rain levels of aluminum, for example, escalating as much as 50,000%. California air quality studies do not show these metals migrating from China, and it's of recent origin.